Velocity didn't see before when they when they brought it to the table. So I'm so interested. This is going to be really a learning experience for the viewers, for us, mm -hmm. to see how now they engage. As we come in, the final day of Super Week begins here for the North American Summer Split. And we are on to the Rift. Velocity Esports taking on Dignitas to start off the day. I think the most uh, interesting thing about this game to watch is going to be when the poke comp tries to disengage and they're they're running away uh, from the turrets of Dignitas. Will the Skara on Kha'Zix be able to catch any stragglers? <laughs> the, the game's all going to be about Skara hunting down the weakest gazelle of the pack and just picking someone off with that isolation damage. Who's so if, away? Yeah, if Velocity are not uh, all together and move as a unit, it when they disengage with their poke comp, then they, Scar will definitely make them pay for it. And again, the teams once again show each other in mid as they're kind of just milling about. They have cover on the tri bush in the bottom lane on the side of Velocity, so they are covered from there. It looks like Patoy wants to get this ward in at least. They're just going for the Qs, trying to get that long range uh, tell of who is there. Kiwi Kid's going to take over the bush and say, Yep, we have room for a ward. There it is. Only one purple ward down there so far, and we got the four of them up for Velocity, so they have the entire river. Uh, they've got plenty of vision. This one at the top, uh, he tried to put it, it's a very sneaky ward to try and put. Okay, so the pink one there um, put down, and now they're back to zero purple wards. Yeah, so only two wards to start this off, meaning they're gonna have about three minutes of safety in lane after these wards come out, up until about five minutes, and then they have one more. So we'll have to see how they play it. That pink ward is going to give a little less pressure to NK Inc. in the jungle on us. It's really interesting that they decided to put their vision down around mid lane here for Dignitas because last time NK Inc. came out of the jungle, he went straight bottom lane uh, and he didn't even look to gank middle. But Scar definitely wants to feel safe and see any of the early invades into red side as well. Vile Rose taking a lot of damage very early. And not something we see every day. Dignitas going to the regular lanes. They're going to send the AD carry bottom. Scar gets mid. Uh, for one of their matchups here, we see Kiwi Kid in that top lane. And we just remember last time, Kiwi Kid was the one to carry on Kha'Zix for, for the Dignitas win. Yeah, this time it's going to be Skara on yep. the Kha'Zix. But the reason that Dignitas sent their duo bottom, uh, even though the, their purple side, is because they know the jungle Ezreal going to come out very quickly, and they don't want to see that early bottom turret like uh, right. they did in the promotions. Evanisk is taking quite a bit of damage. Patoy doing a very nice job of getting it on there. Probably running the straight masteries for damage on that Lulu, and he really can just do more damage than the AD or the support before level three. Yeah. Just so painful. That's actually really huge to not have the flash on Evanisk. Oh my gosh! They're not even wanting to. Maple Street knows the auto attacks are going to hurt so bad. They're losing these trades right now. Patoy playing so well. And the jungle Ezreal uh, actually goes mid lane first. Because they have the duo bottom, mm -hmm. he doesn't make his first stop there. And he's going to try and team up with this Janna, make use of the shield, and get the early pressure onto mid turret instead. Now, this is really smart by Patoy and Cutie Pie. The jungle Ezreal brings just about zero crowd control coming in unless he hits you with the red buff. So they are pushing, causing the aggression bottom lane enough to say NK Inc. can't even help them. And Kazix, everyone says his wave clear is amazing, but that's after he evolves Ooh. his W here. Crumb's trying to come out and clear uh, the wave, but look how much damage he took. A nice shift there. NK Inc. actually just got out of that turret tether, keeping himself safe. So good amount of aggression from the junglers here. We're going to see NK Inc. trying to push back Skara so he cannot get any roam down to really give him some harass here. And Velocity, they really, their team comp doesn't start rolling until they get the first tower down. So they're just doing as much as they can to this one. Four minutes in, and they still have a long ways to go on it. Chris actually taking quite a bit of harassment. Already burned through four pots in this top lane. Unless he grabbed a ward with himself and only a few less. But Kiwi Kid went with that Dorans and still is trying to harass out. 19 to 21. Chris will come back with that ward for safety as we still see NK Inc. pushing that middle lane. You're right, Toby. They want this turret immediately. Scar doing his best to get some damage, though, and dissuade them. Turret's already at 50% speed, or 50% HP as Crumbs makes his return. Will he just slide a sling slingshot in? There's the first part of crowd control that would allow them, but Scar are very low here, trying to chug that health potion down, and Crumbs is waiting. He knows they're going to go to the turret, and they're going to get that much room to fight. So both junglers spending so much time mid, but Velocity are actually the ones that are gaining uh, more ground on this one. As you can see, all the tower damage because of the range of Ezreal. You know, you go with a ranged jungler, yep. then he's going to definitely have the advantage in the early game tower push. So this is both teams now. You said Dignitas before, who, like we said, once those ADs and the support hit level 3, they're able to push Lulu out of the lane here. 
Now, Neveniscus trying to do that is that Dignitas coordinated the AD carry support so they couldn't get the turret fast, but Velocity reacted as well, and they put the jungler mid immediately. Yeah, he is, skipped that whole bottom lane phase and just <laughs> went straight to the middle. It's working out pretty well. Here's the teleport uh, back to mid lane for Vile Rose. That's going to be on cooldown, but it means that they're going to be able to burst yep. down this turret. It's going to be that five minute turret coming in here. Oh, They'll get this next more wave, wave easily for them. They'll Howling Gale it in. Looks like a proxy. Chris coming up here on Renekton. Just able to farm behind. They know all the pressure being created on the map. He's actually able to stop the harassment you can get out of Kennen in the early lane here. Yeah, and look at down at the bottom lane. We have Crumbs again waiting in the Fog of War looking for a jump. But Cutie Pie got harassed down so low that if he did come for a gank, it would be too dangerous. And they don't actually want to go for it. There's the first domino to fall. There it is. Let's see if they can continue. They go on to Evaniscus in the bottom lane. It's going to be a good buckshot with a jump in coming from Maple Street. He feels like he has the damage to finish. One shot. No, he's going to miss that. Cutie Pie stays alive as he auto attacks a minion. Maple Street is going to go down here. The jump won't be up. That cooldown is there. It goes to Patoy. Picks himself up some support gold. So Cutie Pie was not too low for that. He was actually baiting with that low HP. Had his barrier up and... We just had Maple Street pull out a little bit too early. He didn't get the last shot, and he died anyway as Chris takes a lot. There's a slicing Maelstrom on. You can see Kiwi Kid not able to do a lot there. Keeping Chris just in that lane. Neither of them were going anywhere, really, but they're showing each other what power they have, and neither of them can kill one another yet. Yeah, both ultimates pop there, so the surprise factor won't be there for either of right. them. But the wave is pushing to Kiwi Kid's turret, and that means that the pressure for this all-important push poke push comp is there. That's what Velocity need to do. Constantly keep up the pressure in all lanes and, and force Dignitas to come and defend. If they're making Dignitas react to, to Velocity's moves, then they're winning the game. And there has to be a point coming up here when Velocity just pushes too far for what they have. If they're not going to get a ton of kills here and get rich off of this just by turrets, they're not going to have the items to really push inhibitor turrets. So this is going to have to slow down a little bit. We saw it last time. We'll see if they can continue to hold it, though, because they have the lanes right now. I mean, Dignitas with the, the first blood double kill down bottom are actually ahead in gold mm -hmm. right now, even though that turret did go down. So really, Velocity, they, you're right, they have to keep on pushing the, uh, the map control that they have. Pressure doesn't work. Uh, mm -hmm. If you only apply it in one lane, you have to you have to keep it up on the other lane so that you're constantly yeah. stressing Dignitas and making them spread their resources thin and making them choose between what they want to defend. All right, see, so like Patoy has a bit of a mix up there with his control, so we're going to get that sorted out. The team usually very fast at doing this. I should say always very fast at doing this. The breaks are almost non-existent here. But so far throughout this game, like we said, the goal is very close. The one turret being taken down about five and a half minutes in, and it's really been about the push consistently. The CS is still somewhat there for every lane, but look at this. It's NK Inc. with 40 CS to 25 of crumbs, which means he's almost a, that kill back to him and the assist. Yes, so they're pretty much even. Yeah, and that CS is actually lane CS since both of them were in the lane. <laughs> Crumbs was actually just trying to gank the whole time, but we had, we had um, NK Inc. who was killing minions and hitting the turret. His CS lead over Crumbs is actually the difference between Janna and Kha'Zix also. Yep. So it looks like, you know, uh, we had Scara beating Vile Rose in the CS, but really Ezreal was just taking them. So pretty even in that mid lane two versus two sort of situation that, that came about. It looks like we may have uh, Cutie Pie going for that Blade of the Rune King. Graves obviously wanting to be a fighter in the fight. What's the choice between Blade and just having that Bloodthirster? So the difference is the, the times that you get your power spikes. There's a big uh, sort of lull when you're going for Blade of the Rune King between your Cutlass and your finished Blade of the Rune King where you have to save up uh, all the money for the Combine and you, and you, you right. lose out on a lot of power. But for the Bloodthirster, as soon as you can get that BF Sword, uh, it, especially for Graves, it gives, uh, it helps his wave clear tremendously. And right. wave clear is going to be so important in this push poke game where Velocity are always constantly trying to push turrets. Dignitas need every single wave clearing tool at their disposal to be at maximum effectiveness. We'll have to see what he goes for. He still has the choice to go in either path. Maybe the Blade of the Rune King, since Chris is going to be that beefcake for the team and he wants to be able to cut through it and get away. We will see as the game now continuing. We are back on to the rift after we get Patoy all set up. Nope, <laughs> I'm a liar. So we're just, just checking Patoy's okay. settings right now. So we'll get this figured out. But that mid lane push coming in, NK Inc. left the jungle immediately. Like you said, he didn't even pressure bottom lane whatsoever. He went out, didn't even, I think he did Wraith and then went mid because 
they were like, you know what, we can get this turret. Like you said, dig. They 2v2 us in the bottom lane. We need to react to this. Yeah, too. that was exactly what we were talking about. The um, Dignitas made the good adaptation where they sent their AD and support bottom. It gives us more time also to talk about the Blade of the Ruin King. Another bonus for that, actually, if he went that route, mm -hmm. would be the added utility where he can slow someone. And slows are really strong against a Pokemon if they can actually get in range to grab anyone. If they can hold on to one person and you take out one piece of the poke comp, then the, the rest of it really crumbles. We'll see what is going to happen. Seven minutes 40 in, like we said, first game of the day here as we get everybody situated, get everybody fixed up. Patoy looks like he's good. Crumbs' his mouse kind of went haywire for a quick second there, so we're getting the tech team in, and we're going to get that fixed up and get him suited. Looking at the rest of the scores here, we do have Renekton not really getting too tanky phase yet. We have Chris building up the health crystal. He's mm -hmm. kind of trying to match Doran's against Kenan to not be harassed out of lane. And we actually saw that they both went head-to-head -head in that top lane and kind of came out with half health and were like, all right, maybe next time, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of interesting the the adaptations that Velocity have made to this composition. Right now, they are bringing a tank to this uh, to this fight, and they also have that late game Tristana hyper carry. So there are a few extra answers if if the game the early game doesn't work out how they planned. Right. You know, with the AP Jana and Ezreal shoving constantly, they still can rely on a end game hyper carry Tristana with uh, with the, going for the six item builds here, and they'll they will have a front line a tank in that Renekton. And you know, something we, we do talk about is that early level game, level game when you can create pressure. In the bottom lane, we actually saw the Graves Lulu winning from level one to three, crushing that down. And then the next time we went down to the bottom lane, I think it was the Ignite coming out from Evaniscus, and they were trying to get the kill down. And that's something we have to point out as well, is Evaniscus running the aggressive summoner spell for the lane, obviously, so the, support, or the AD carry can run that defense. Yeah, it's really popular for supports nowadays to run that Ignite because all the AD carries want to take barrier <laughs> because they don't don't want to build any defenses early so mm -hmm. if you can get that defense from your summoner spell you don't have to spend money on it and you just have the support use ignite the only drawback to that is that sometimes the supports will get the kills yeah with the right Ignite. but that's definitely a worthwhile trade because barrier on your ad carry or cleanse in a case where there's a lot of cc uh is is really more beneficial and that's kind of what went into that one the bottom lane though we have to say the the difference in that was the gank from crumbs he just the double kill right there really brought it back for them. And it had to happen because that was the exact time the mid turret was going down. Crumbs was like, we need to counteract on this. Mm. Went down to the bottom lane. They were able to pick that up, which obviously going to help quite a bit. They were able to get that kill on both to Maple Street and Nebaniscus, but it's the only two. It's kind of been slow. There hasn't been any movement towards the top lane. Like I said in the beginning, I thought they were going to try to shut down Chris, but yeah. it's all been kind of chaotic and figuring out where to move the next chess piece because everybody's moving and hitting the clock right away. When you have some composition like this that tries to push so early, like Velocity Bring, then you really, Dignitas doesn't have a choice. They have to react to that. So Crumbs made the decision after trying several times to stop this Ezreal mm -hmm. and Janna push mid, just gave up on it. He knew they, he wasn't going to be able to stop it because they're, they're, the range advantage is just too strong this early in the game. There's nothing that Zach could offer there. That's why he turned his attention bottom, right. trying to make up for it in a different area of the map. See these guys still getting prepped, Crumbs getting everything fixed up, and these guys not discussing the game, not allowed to, because if, if somebody obviously doesn't have a, a piece of peripheral working or something, then they're not privy to the information, they're not right. on top. So everybody's kind of just chill here, you know, whatever they're saying is like, man, that boiling crab we might want to get <laughs> with Coast is going, or yeah, Cloud, that sounded Cloud good. Nine is going to be delicious. I feel like I want to go, <laughs> go to that with them, uh, how can we sneak in there? We'll see. We no will favoritism, see. of course, but uh, we just <laughs> we want some crab too. So we did have the mid turret push down, and then they were almost able to get that second mid turret. The second tier turret is down to about mm -hmm. half health right now. No real pressure on the map from anyone. It has been a switch though. When you come back into the game, Vile Rose has moved to the top lane. If you saw it on the minimap before, they got the pause in. So they're kind of considering that they want to get the next turret down. We'll probably see NK Inc. Fo fo follow Vile Rose up top to yeah. get that next turret because the double lane isn't really working out for anybody in the bottom lane. Right. right. Well, you really want to keep the combo of the AP Jana and the Ezreal um, because their power right now in the game is just so much stronger right. um, than a lot of the Dignitas. The thing for Dignitas right now that's that's different from the first tower going down is we have Kha'Zix level 6. So he's been able to evolve his W. He now has that giant AoE and Skara can actually do his part to wave clear and him plus Graves plus Lulu is actually really strong uh, wave clear for Dignitas. So they should 
be able to put up a good fight holding on to the rest of their turrets. The real uh, discussion here is going to be when do they turn their attention away from turrets and who will be the first one to go for Dragon instead. It's true. It's going to have to be soon. Dignita or, yeah, Dignitas Crumbs. Crumbs himself is quite close to that level 6. He is level 5 right now and about 50% the way through getting back in right now and trying to get back into the game. That dragon has just been warded by Velocity, so they are looking to have coverage on that. Crumbs is towards the top lane after seeing the swap with Janna, so they may figure they're trying to take the turret. This could, however, work out in their favor if they don't find NK Inc. there instantly. Yeah, that's the bonus of having, you know, this uh, AP Janna with Teleport. If she's able to draw two people up to the top lane, then they don't even have to send Ezreal up yep. there. They can bluff that top lane, Absolutely. and, and Janna can defend a turret one versus two incredibly easy at this point in the game so they could sneak the dragon with that with that sort of bait all right we'll see crumbs he is actually yes yeah, 75 percent to six and we'll see as they get back into the matchup we are checking out eveniscus in maple street eveniscus sitting on a ward the toy and crew trying to keep themselves safe in the bottom lane nk inc has actually gone up top they have a ward that's going to be stuck for another about two and a half minutes on dragon so no pressure there and once they see crumbs they're more than happy to stay yeah, and Crumbs, again, waiting in the Fog of War, trying to just follow NK Inc. around. It hasn't worked out for them before. They still lost the middle turret, and he's just really repeating the same moves that he's made before that cost them the mid turret. There's just too much disengage. Unless you have somebody coming from the back side of that engagement, they're always going to get away. Yeah, well, you can't really catch Ez blue, blue buff Ezreal with a Janna right now. There's Whoa. nothing you can do. Cutie Pie going for kills. Throws it out. Eveniscus actually flashes the Buckshot. I believe he got hit by collateral damage. There's a lot still coming out from Batoy in the pain region. And Eveniscus realizes that and backs off. That's huge that the burst there from Graves is going to be down, the, the combo. He really does need his ultimate too, but he's looking like he wants another piece. They put another the attack down, shot. so he's getting double damage down. He put the dot onto Patoy and trying to focus onto Cutie, so they're both taking damage. But the trade going in favor of Dig here is Eveniscus is still like, hey man, I'm still pretty hurt from that last engagement. Let's get sustained here and then we can do it again. Yeah, Sona is not actually maxing her heal though. So Eveniscus is going offensive, trying to get the Q maxed wow. up and get the, the power cords he's down. He's trying to trade back with yeah, Patoy. The power cords down there. Uh, the battle of supports right now, both of them maxing Qs. So they really are looking... Uh, for the kills right now, and since we just have the level 6 on Sona, and there's no level 6 uh, ultimate here for Graves, the burst potential is actually bigger now on Velocity. They say go for Janna this time, but there's the disengage from Vile Rose. They're going to be able to hit. This is NK Inc. just having free time to shoot everybody. Vile Rose shields and walks out. Gotta come from behind here. So they did actually get the flash. That's, that's pretty big for them, but it was at the cost of Kiwi Kids. Flash and yep. ultimate. So it looks like Crumbs not done yet. Chris has been doing that all day. He did it to Kiwi Kid in the top lane. Vile Rose finally going to go down. Like he said, they wasted a bit too much there. Getting a little too antsy. Vile Rose, or rather, NK Inc. decides to stay as the bottom pressure continues. Shanna just a little bit too squishy. Shouldn't have actually stayed around that one. They knew that Crumbs was actually still up there. He could very well be in that bush still and uh, just could sort of waited around in lane. Ten minutes into this one, three kills for Dig now, but it's still the goal will Global gold for Velocity keeping them in this as they tie it up even. 13,700, the two turrets in their favor for that pressure. And this is the bonus of having everyone pushing all the lanes at once. We had Chris, since uh, everyone, Ezreal and Janna were taking all the attention top, he went down bottom lane, they finished off that turret, and now the teleport from Janna. As soon as she revives, right back to middle, she's able to push Skara off of that turret. And we're pretty much watching everybody right now fight unscaled. They have not gone back. 1,300 is an average amount of gold right now for these champions that they're holding. You'll see these items start to come in. It's a giant spelt right away. An almost fully built Blade of the Rune King, the last recipe to be had by Maple Street. We'll have to see if that's what Cutie Pie goes for, and the AD carries kind of sit even. And Ganks by himself for this one and taking a lot of harass. Crumbs has his passive up, so he could dive. <laughs> Just ends up taking a Ridiculous amount of damage in tower hits, though. They say Vile Rose needs to come back up top. They're making sure they have that movement between turrets. Very good for Janet. I had a pass. Oh, Eveniscus getting dropped down behind the turret. Just walked out of range. Scar with the roam. He quietly was just feeding on that mid lane, free farming, then went down to steal the red buff and turn that into a gank down bottom. Perfect timing there while Sona's flash was still down. And this just really all happened. The Dragon Ward is down. The other wards are down. It's completely dark on the bottom side of the map. They may want to try to get back out of this. 
Skara is still sitting on that pink ward. He knew he was not being seen. They will engage 3v2 here onto Maple Street. Barrier goes down. Maple Street tries to do as much damage as he can. The turret's very low as well. <gasps> but the presence of NK Inc. now. The bird takes down Skara as he tries to get himself in for the fight. It may have been bad and it turns sour for Dig. Cutie Pie is going to go down as well. There's no turret here for Batoy. He has the speed up. Chris will not be able to slice and dice. The jungle Ezreal coming in turns that up for two kills here for Velocity. And Kiwi Kid once more on Vile Rose. This is going to be some good damage for Kiwi. Did get his proc on, but he did not have that electrical surge up for the stun damage to keep him in range. So still just harass win for him. He knows he's going to be able to put pressure on that lane. This is Velocity, however, taking advantage of that pressure up top. Yeah, double kill down bottom means that they yeah. can get this dragon. Crumbs trying to make them answer for it with the mid damage on turret, but he wasn't able to get that one. We have to have the Vile Rose recall up top, by the way, because Slicing Maelstrom still up for Kiwi Kid. Looking around after the Dragon is grabbed. Velocity Esports now grabbing themselves the gold lead by about 1,000, 200 gold. Crumbs is going to try to take down this turret up top. They're going to be able to negate that Dragon. Well, not negate it, but kind of even it out, I should say, as the bottom lane being pressured. Good words coming out for Velocity allows them to be all over the map here. Yeah, Valro's doing his best to defend this turret. You can cast the Janna Shield onto turrets, mm -hmm. and so that helps out a lot, um, defending it for some extra damage. So does NK Inc. The red buff does hit. It's like he won't decide to follow on that. Vile Rose, <laughs> Vile Rose, not really that tanky right now. He can still go in and fight with shield, but use it on the turret, so they're going to have to be careful. Skara back to mid, not pushing, putting any pressure towards that bottom lane, and the blue buff is up as well. We'll see what Velocity can make out of this. A pink ward to go down as well, so they don't want Skara sneaking in with his stealth. And Skara, he keeps on shoving this wave, but as soon as he gets to the turret, he doesn't overextend and put extra damage on the turret. So Dignitas are still zero turrets down. Meanwhile, we have the constantly pushing bottom lane of Velocity. Look at all the wards that Evaniscus had put into the blue side jungle. But Toy's having to come over and put pink wards down to clear them out. They're harassing right now to Skara towards that blue buff top turret very low as well. Skara using everything he can. The blue going to Maple? Wow, he definitely just took that with an E. Very good steal right there for Maple. There was no smite for either team in the right. area, so it's all about abilities. And uh, no jungler takes any heat for that Ooh, one. Ooh, Kiwi Kid, there's the burn on. The Howling Gale pops him up. The Zephyr's been used, so he's kind of just getting out of the red buff. It's going to be Let's Bounce. That crowd control break from that spell keeps them safe. Chris, however, is going to be able to help this top side. And here comes Skara too. He walks through a ward though, so they're going to know that he's here. As it's three men on two, it looks like they're going to try and pressure this turret. Skara coming back out. Remember, he just was downside for that blue, so they're trying to scramble here, make moves. They may be able to get a few, so he will come up with not full health, but he still will come up. No, they're going to dive onto this, and they get all of them. The cold, the meat just shredding down Crumbs. Crumbs walked over to that position past a ward. Yeah. The ward in the jungle there just won them that kill. Crumbs, I don't really know what he was going for with that uh, fog of war positioning. He wanted to get maybe a uh, elastic slingshot off to get them off the turret, but now the battle continues. This, this isn't really that bad for him. Chris is the one that's supposed to die in these fights. You saw him dive in, and it was Maple Street and, or rather, NK Inc. and Evanis, or Vile Rose to just walk out. They were like, all right, if you die, you die. They're fighting 3v4s. Sona and Triss are still pushing bot. They don't need everybody in these engagements. Yeah, you have to pay attention to the entire map right here. They are able to draw everyone over into the red side jungle, and because they already killed Crumbs, yep. they have the numbers advantage. This is going to be t uh, the secondary turret here in the bottom lane going to take and this is absolutely a little bit of what they did previously. They were able to just crush down turrets with not even the full team. Power in numbers is not a factor in this composition. It's poke. Yeah, and Dignitas are finally able to answer with that mid lane, trying to get more on the top here, but Valrose does his best. The thing is, look at all the wards here for Velocity. They're aware! That's going to be pretty big, actually. He's still taking anything. You can't throw shurikens at the turret when you're in lightning rush. Oh, my gosh. He almost gets taken down there. Vile Rose knowing the damage he can take, but they engage onto the bottom. Crumbs trying to go verbatim on what happened last time. Skara misses with the spikes. That's a lot of damage they're going to have to set under the turret for. Skara takes a few more shots. No, it goes over to Crumbs as he jumps. Oh, the whiffed crescendo. Those really just break your heart when you see those little ones come heat. through. Tough break for him, but Chris is able to capitalize because four members were drawn down bottom. You can see how they're making Dignitas 
overcommit and just constantly run Dignitas around the map, they take objectives wherever Dignitas are not. So they see four people bottom, boom, there's another mid turret. Blade of the Rune King coming out. Yes, it was the Bloodthirster for Cutie Pie. So Maple Street goes his direct build. They finally have those created. Let's see where Cutie Pie is on his stacks. And he is actually almost there on full stack. He is trying to get that in the jungle there. 122 to 107. And we actually have a super low farm game in Seattle. It's been all about the scramble. Yeah, it's all about the towers for Velocity and the kills for Dignitas. Dignitas, they're trying to run around, like we said, and catch Velocity off guard. Yes, they've been able to catch a few kills, but they always lose something in trade. And if you get kills, then you're going to get a bounty. There's the left bounce going on. Scar comes in. They might be able to get Eveniscus there. The jump out from Maple Street keeps them safe. This should be a bit of gold for them. He throws down a war to say, I'll use this before I die. And oh, a second attempt at the turret causes Kiwi Kid his life. Kiwi Kid wants that turret so bad and he <laughs> just can't finish it off. The Janna Shield's just so frustrating for him there. And he actually dies for it this time because there's no more flash left. He's actually gone fast distortion boots here. He used to do this on his singe, like as soon as he could buy distortion boots. Yeah, and that's just for Flash. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't doesn't do anything for Ignite there. But right, right. Uh, Flash is so important with Kennen. It's a pretty good buy right there. Um, it's kind of how you all Flash, yeah. <laughs> Flash Maelstrom's so much better than Lightning Flash Maelstrom's. We'll have to see Cutie Pie now taking up Golems in the bottom lane. He's going to go back. I thought you were going to go push or fight Maple Street, but I guess not. Way to be a cutie. Those glasses. If he had the green glasses on, he'd probably be doing it right now. See where the pressure is on the map. We're going to see Scar going towards the top lane. Cutie Pie just coming out of base now as they're trying to really set themselves up. This is a bit of the lull moment. Dragon's going to come up, and there's a lot of focus for Dig in the top lane. But remember, that Dragon was Velocities without any vision of Dig, so they're blind on this. Yeah, Still. Velocity, their top turret's been at one hit forever, so they're just <laughs> giving that for a Dragon, which isn't much of a trade. Right. Since that tower was so low, it's actually a good move by Velocity here, just giving that one up, trying to grab the Global Gold here from Dragon instead. Thought Cutie Pie and them were gonna go for it. Maybe not. Still backing in the jungle. Crumbs. They're looking and to set up a gank it. over here on whoever comes to defend this turret. I really like the move because there's no defensive wards for Velocity. Velocity used so many wards on the offensive oh. jungle that Bile Rose is gonna have to back. All the disengage, the flash coming out there as well. So that's gonna be good for them. The teleport's still down for Janna. So this is the time Dignitas needs to move. Like we said, Kobe, there was going to be a lull in the amount of pressure Velocity could put on this. And this, this is exactly the difference between the two teams. Dignitas just used three people to go for a kill, and they were unsuccessful in that kill. Whereas Velocity, they're only looking to push. So they've shoved up this mid and bottom lane. They are just avoiding the fights. It really is that team that you they want to swamp the pressure on, but they'll never want to get in the engagement. Kiwi Kid still in the bottom lane. Janna Teleport almost coming back up, so this engagement could be big for them. They get another blue over to themselves, this time going to Chris. Looks like they walk out safely. Good wards for Dig, though. They know what's going on, but they just can't act on anything. Yeah, you know, the disengage is really strong for Velocity, and it's going to get even better when NK Inc. is able to uh, complete his Blue Ezreal build. Jungle Ezreal really started, uh, or Blue Ezreal really started in the jungle uh, because it started with that um, Lizard item, and it, he naturally builds this way. So it, it's not like he has to sacrifice anything to go for that. Yeah, we've heard Cutie Pie say it's such a cost-efficient item. It almost must be gotten. Scar taking some good damage. A burst there, the crescendo to finish him off. No, he gets the flash. There is the damage coming out from Evaniscus. Like you said, he was leveling that Q. Okay, Evaniscus made up for that whiff down bottom right there. Barely catching Scar right as he popped the ult. And that means it's going to be four on five at this turret. We get to see the poke in action from the AP Jana plus Ezreal combo. Crumbs from the side could try to dodge into this one. He bounces in, but only to show himself and create a little bit of pressure. Nothing for Velocity really coming out of this as they back up. Six to five at 20 minutes into this. Velocity with dragons in their favor, with turrets in their favor as well. They are up by two, and they just continuously push the poke comp again. The second time to come out of the hands of Velocity. Cutie Pie mans up and goes to scare them off the red buff. 
claiming it for himself. Kukupai, by the way, did go with the Bloodthirster route because the wave clear is so important in these push games. You gotta get that buckshot uh, ramping up, and the flat AD is what it scales with. It's gonna be very big for Kiwi Kid picking up the Zanyas now. These next fights are gonna be a lot better for them. He is gonna be able to stay in with that slicing maelstrom on the Howling Gale. Crumb so or far deep. Monsoon, rather Monsoon with the ignite. Oh, or rather Crumbs with the ignite. Kiwi Kid goes in hard. There's the Zanyas going down. He got the wild growth as well. It's Cutie Pie with the turret aggro, and they are forced to get out. Crumbs got out of that one with just a recall from the bush, and now Maple Street. Oh, Maple going a little too hard there. Forced to rocket jump and barrier, but here comes NK Inc. The poke to start. He's got Vile Rose there for safety. They have been on the buddy system all came long. Crumbs immediately got those home guards, and he's almost back into this fight. So now it's <laughs> Dignitas with the upper hand. They are the ones that just grabbed the pressure there. A very deep dive and dangerous one, but they were able to come out with it uh, with a kill. Vile Rose as well, picking up home guards, just accentuating that Janna speed, getting himself back into the game. And he is also crushing down some waves himself. He doesn't have as much CS because he's been sharing it with NK Inc. the whole time, but his turret safety has been huge for the team. Yeah, the, the safety from the, the shields is really big, and also movement speed yeah. is so huge when you're playing these shove games. The early home guards really come out when you, when you see these 22 minutes and everybody's already knocking at the doors of inhibitor turrets. Looks like we got Kiwi, or Kiwi Kid, rather. We, I'm a cutie pie picking up the Phantom Dancer quite fast. How much money and gold are you sitting on right now, Maple Street? 150 gold, so he is actually just on that BF sword looking to get some damage. Attack speed rely on Q. So we'll see how those two go in the fight. It's something Dignitas has been looking for and something Velocity has been exceptional at stopping. Yeah, I mean, as soon as he... He'll probably go into an Infinity Edge with that uh, BF right. sword, by the way, for Tristana, mm -hmm. because he's already got the attack speed from Blade of the Ruin King, and he's really going to be looking to be the end game damage here. Vile Rose actually has to use his Monsoon. That, that was pretty scary. I didn't think Crumbs was going to go too hard. It was a good choice. They don't have vision of that jungle, just the entry to Baron. They have to be quite careful. No, they actually, they do. Janna was sitting on top of that ward in blue. They're going for Baron, Baron now. Baron does a lot of damage. Four minutes in. Oh, my God. The Juice Shot Barrage almost cleaning up the team. Kiwi Kid is for sure going to go down. He doesn't even get the Zanyas inside Baron. They could completely clean this fight up. A nice disengage by Scar. They need to just use that and get out of this fight. The early Barons have been so bad for LCS teams, and this is another case of it. Teleport down to the bottom lane by John, it means they get the inhibitor turret. That is absolutely ridiculous. The Oracle's here, so the Velocity's definitely gonna play this one safe. They don't wanna lose that. They do continue to keep vision on that situation. The Oracle's breaks out. Maple Street and Vile Rose kinda stay in there, but they know they have to disengage, and they, they're kinda staying. Yeah, and look at the minion wins that they, they Pushed up as well. Pressure all over the map. We said every single lane was important. You have to keep your eyes. And that's why this teleport on John is so important. They're able to get the objectives and back out in time. Crumbs getting hit up pretty hard here. He may go down. That passive almost being used. The ignite. No, it's going to be the burn from his E. On the Tristana, Evanisk is coming up with his second kill of the matchup here. Dignitas look completely out of sorts right now. They were not really expecting this, it looks like. Even though Velocity have shown this exact strategy before, they're playing it really well, and Dignitas really, the, the early Baron, definitely cost them. It's, it's completely an underestimated tactic, an undersung tactic, and it's chaos. Creating chaos against your opponent is hellacious. It's so strong, especially in the early stages of the game. You can't go for a Baron like that. Baron does so much damage to your team at this point in the game, and he takes too long to take down, when every second in a push game like this means that you could lose your inhibitor turret, just like they did. <laughs> A teleport strategy to come in. That window is kind of down, but Velocity, every time they have it up, every time they look for a shot, they make it. And they make it happen if you, with glorious flying colors, if you will. <laughs> Going down the teleport bottom for the Baron, like you said, making moves only when they can. They knew they had a lull that we, we kind of spoke of. They weren't going to be able to just crush turrets forever. They waited for that and are now, again, ramping up for that mid-game kind of U power curve that Tristana has with the team. Yeah, glad that we have... Uh, you know, a team like Velocity in the LCS because they their biggest strength is obviously this comp and this game. Yeah. The way that they're playing it right now where they're constantly pushing and shoving uh, the minion waves. Uh, and it really, it really is going to wake up Dignitas and the rest of these LCS teams that you have to be able to adapt to this type of game. You don't see it enough. You're just going to have to play it in your mind over and over again because you're not going to say Velocity scrimmage with that over. They're going to say no. 
we're gonna beat you with it every time. We're just gonna beat you with it every time. Coming down to the mid turret, unfazed by what's going on. Still trying to get the split push, and Crumbs goes in! There goes the slicing Maelstrom, but the, again, the Monsoon, a great counter to it. They don't step into the damage just yet. The True Shot Barrage flies across the entire team. The Crescendo has been used, so this is Dignitas now on the move. The crowd control is not there for them. Cutie Pie gets almost jumped on. He's forced to use the Quick Draw in defense, and it looks like they're gonna continue. Maple Street completely full health. A shield on him as well. He can clean up the fight by himself he if he wanted reset. to. Just gonna go ahead and walk over. The, the reset is there. He jumps for Cutie Pie. Will be able to find no the double kill however for NK Inc. Wrong wall and they don't want to go chasing Cutie Pie. They want to try and get another inhibitor turret. This is exactly what they have to do is keep on the pressure. Get another one of these down. Double super minion lanes would mean that they have complete control of the game even though it's 10 to 10. Such a counter that monsoon to Kennen's ultimate. It's the third time. If Kiwi can get it in zone, oh! it's gonna work so much better. Oh, he goes hard for it. Kiwi Kid goes down. He loses the blue as well. For Triss to have her rapid fire up that quickly is going to be very bad for these guys. And she gets out. Maple Street playing it safe. One, two, and five. That was his first kill, but he's starting to make an impact. Maple Street valuing his life more than the last hit on an inhibitor right there. And they actually are going to get out of this one with only that one death there from NK. I think he's coming up with his IE after he's done here. He's going to grab a few more in gold, come back with that Infinity Edge, and that surge of power for Tristana is going to be there. Just saw a huge fight that was really executed by Dignitas for the first time. They went in on everybody they could. The Velocity kind of just walked around what they were doing. Everyone always says, you know, what you have to do against those poke comps is get the hard engaged. They used everything to get it, though, just to get a hold of Janna for a split second with the Mon, uh, with mm -hmm. the Maelstrom stun right there. That was the whole cannon ultimate down and almost all the damage was avoided. Chris was able to dash out and Janna with the Monsoon knocking him back meant that uh, Kennen and Zack were not able to follow up on that one and the, the Tristana just coming through from the side and wrecking face. And you have to put, you know, to credit what Velocity is doing in their play, you know. Skara on Kha'Zix right now with the Muramana and a Last Whisper and a Brutalizer is going to crush any one of these try carry or support or carries they have right now. They don't have defense. Like we said, it's only Chris building the beef right now. So they're positioning so well in these fights to not even take that damage. And they also have two very powerful support ultimates that they're making great use of. Yeah. The, the crescendos from Evaniscus after that whiffed one bottom oh. have been much better, and he always catches Skara. Oh, I thought it was going to be that first initiation from behind that may have set them in that fight on the right foot. But Maple Street able to get the inhibitor with his team. They begin to back out. Is he still sitting on that gold? He has 2,100, so they would have gone into that fight with him sitting on 2K and possibly won it. 2K gold is a very substantial amount. You're right. That's a more than a BF sword. They, they could actually... Uh, Increase the damage a lot, but Velocity don't have to go back right now. All they have to do is poke and not be engaged it's, on. It's really a consideration of the strength of pressure to us winning fights still with you without that Infinity Edge right now. And they're really taking the strength and pressure into consideration. Right now, they all they have to do is really waste Dignitas time because with the inhibitor in mid down, mm -hmm. this super minion is beating on the inhibitor bottom. It will take it by itself if they just leave it. Crumbs coming in again, front entry. Kiwi Kid trying to get in with the rush, but he cannot. His flash is going to be up in about 25 seconds. Another turret going down. The poke comp just too much, even in the eyes of Dignitas. We hear the shot from the back. Chris tries to go in. Will he be able to get it? No. Evaniscus does not have his flash. It's going to be a walk-up crescendo. Krems goes right into it. The Monsoon goes out right away. No, the Monsoon is still up, actually. And it looks like they're going to keep that. That was the buster shot from Maple Street. That bottom inhibitor still taking a lot of damage, though. Kiwi trying to go clear it out. Kiwi Kid, he's going to take quite a bit of damage from these minions, most likely. They won't be able to take the turret unless those melees do. He has a few minions coming up behind him. They're trying to take down Crumbs right now. The melees do get it. And it looks like Kiwi Kid has left the fight to lose the inhibitor as well. They're going to try to go in this time. That's what I'm talking about. They have no armor in this fight. The double kill for Skara. A third jump. Will he be able to clean up Chris? He's the tankiest one. If they can do it, it means they're going to run through this one. They have to get map pressure off of this. Resets for Kai. Uh, Kha'Zix right there. Scar is exactly what he wanted. Crumbs is not going to give up the chase, actually. He, oh he's my still gosh. going to have an they, they now turn their attention towards Baron. They want Cutie Pie to defend the base while they try and two-man this Baron. Kiwi Kid even going to come in and try and help, but look how much damage Crumbs is taking. The lower Zack gets the, the more efficient his healing is with those blobs, though, because he only loses current health, but he gains maximum health. It looks like he's going to stay pretty safe on this one. He actually almost died for a second, but was able to pick it up. 
So Patoy and Cutie Pie able to help. A little breather for both teams now and a definite sigh of relief for Dignitas to see that they can actually get the kills to come up on the other side. So Velocity still have to be careful. You know, they wanted to stay around because Kiwi Kid was forced bottom to try and deal with those super minions on the inhibitor. That meant that uh, Velocity wanted to keep the rest of Dignitas interested in try and get the top one, but got a little bit overzealous there. And the hard engage, you can see what happens when they actually get one. And you have a champion like Kha'Zix with the isolation damage. He'll just reset after reset after reset. And NK Inc. was actually able to pick up that Glacial Shroud. He had that armor coming in, but that's invisible to Scar right now. Brutalizer, Last Whisper. He's pretty much just going right through that. And we saw the damage they took. One, two, three, continued to go. And they were even able to take down Chris quite fast, which definitely is going to make Velocity think in this next fight where they're positioning, because it was a little off for that last one. And Dignitas <laughs> really... From this point on, it's defense of the Alamo. They have to be, be inside their basin <laughs> forever until their their inhibitors come back up. They Maybe are just, even the basement. They're just constantly clearing out minion waves. And whenever velocity show up, you have to try and get that sneaky elastic slingshot off from crumbs to to get the slight knot back and allow the rest of Dinktos to follow up. So you can actually see now that NK Inc. has this Iceborne Gauntlet, he's playing the front line and he's not really letting Chris be up there. He's just trying to get the Q shots out and they're really working the poke of Ezreal. Maple Street staying so far behind, it looks like he wants to initiate with his rocket jump here. So dangerous right now because Dignitas have two waves coming in, mid and bottom with those super minions, that Cutie Pie is fully occupied. So they, they really have the, the four versus five for a split second, but he's staying close enough because they're, they're all going to the Nexus turrets that he can still join and, and turn his focus if they do get a catch. This is just like, who's going to make that one wrong move? Crumbs decides to go out. This Shirelli is right out of that one. Just going to be a quick cooldown. Holy macaroni, Maple Street going hard right now onto Crumbs. That was four or five shots within the movement of 400 range. That was pretty painful. Ultimate down for Scar too. That's actually pretty big since he did evolve the ulti and you get three activations of it. That's going to be a lot of extra damage that he won't have to, to reset that passive of his and get the extra magic damage. Crumbs trying to hide behind the trees in the base few attacks coming out. Patoy even has an Oracle just to clear out wards in the base right now. That's how strenuous it's getting. And that's how important the invisible, you know, the elastic slingshot from Fog of War is to them. There it is on Maple Street. They do get a good bounce. It's right in. There's the Monsoon. He's still got Slicing Maelstrom going. Throwing down the Zanyas. No, he waits. It's going to be the Crescendo going across. It's good damage from both teams. Anybody fight to come up here, but Velocity is definitely disengaging harder, and they're getting the poke back down. Scara, Cutie Pie, the health bars are falling. Cutie Dick, or Kiwi Kid, rather, on the back side of this. It's going to be Ezreal shifting out. NK Inc. keeps himself safe. The Iceborne Gauntlet doing work for the team right now. scar has got to be careful right now, but that was beautiful by Crumb. He caught Maple Street as the jump was going off and just knocked him out of the air. The inhibitor still goes down though for Velocity. We we'll have to see another inhibitor in their eyes. All around Kiwi Kid trying to clean up the mid lane right now. Scar going back in out of Chris. They were able to get the kill last time. The bounce from Crumbs. Can he get the Q slow? It does not gonna, it's not gonna be in range. And we gotta remember this is with Baron still going on. So when it wears off, Velocity is going to be way more inclined to get in that base. Oh my gosh! Unstoppable coming in for Scara. Can he get another kill right here? This is the money that they need. The GA is up. They're more than likely to follow this one in. It's not too much of a tunnel for him. Scar or Crumbs rather, there to pick up the kill for himself. Very, very dangerous here for Velocity. Although there's almost no base left for Dignitas, they're obviously, uh, they can win the team sides if they can get those amazing elastic slingshots from Crumbs to start everything off. Scar right now is a monster. There's nothing that Velocity can do to, to stop those resets when they start going because not only do they have the isolation damage, but they've got Cutie Pie with the one of the most bursty ADs. They can, he can focus whatever target first target Scar goes after and just use his combo, the buckshot mm -hmm. and the collateral damage to make sure that one guy goes down and Scar gets his initial reset. They do almost have like a quick assassination from two people. Obviously, Kha'Zix being that assassinator, but with the HP bars as high as they are right now, he is going to need a little assist from Cutie Pie on that first. 19 to 11 as we look over the score. The gold has increased quite a bit since the last time. I think last time we looked at it, it was about 20k, but it's still even. It's 53.7 thousand gold to 54.7. So that 1k is really split it across five people. You have 200 gold. What are you going to buy with that? Absolutely nothing. So this game right now, hanging on a thread for both teams. 
Yeah, the bounty's also racking up for Dignitas because they're getting so much of their money from kills where Velocity are getting it from uh, CS and global objectives like the Dragon that they just picked up. So if Scar actually does go down twice, then they're going to get a nice chunk there too. But the GA means that it's going to be a, a tough task for them. Just to show you how fast gold goes, they're absolutely even now. 55-3, 55-2 on its way to 3. We'll round up. 36 minutes into this one, 10 turrets to 3. There's 11 on the rift, which means Dignitas has one more on their base. They're going to go in onto Maple Street. They get the crescendo back across. It's going to be Maple Street being able to shred, but whoa, the slicing Maelstrom to take him out. The finish from the collateral damage. They all get an assist off of it. It's going to be Dignitas rolling through to clean up the fight on this one. Chris is going to go down. That is the tank for Velocity Esports, and they are just going to watch their teammates go to the grave as it's 22 to 11. Dignitas starts up the train, and they begin to move. Kiwi Kid Zanya's there with 17 HP that did just save him. So close to dying for three members of Dignitas, but they came out ahead on that one. And you can see again the power of the Kha'Zix execute. Everybody getting back to base. This is the thing that Dignitas has to worry about. Usually things are all, you know, gold and glitter after you win a fight, but it's defense after everything for Dignitas right now. Yeah, and Maple Street is level 17 right now. He's almost at that max range Tristana. Mm -hmm. And he's got two support ultimates to, to rely upon, plus his own ultimate, the Buster Shot knocking people away, and the Rocket Jump. He really has to not die, not be the first one or two people dying here for Velocity because he is so much of their damage with that Infinity Edge, Ruined King, Phantom Dancer combo. And something right now going through all of these players' minds, obviously, Kobe, is Baron coming back up right now. Where is their positioning? Obviously, Vile Rose grabbing blue. We can see Aveniscus trying to clear with the Oracle as they look to gain position here in the upper hand on the Baron Dance. Only one inhibitor down uh, for Dignitas right now, though, means that it's going to be risky for Velocity because they know if they group up inside the Baron pit, Dignitas will just dumpster them. They've got plenty of AoE. Zach's going to be knocking them around inside the Slicing Maelstrom. If they group up at all, then Dignitas will immediately capitalize. So Dignitas has weathered the Velocity Storm, have been able to take the boards off their windows and get out of the base for a second here. Now able to play some wards around. Dancing for Baron. Their lanes are pushed up to the river, which makes them safe. They won't get a death in one push down if their velocity is able to grab this. Crumbs getting himself caught up. They have Chris in a good spot to continue this cleanup, but it does not look like they're really able to initiate. That's a big burst down, and they know it. Collateral damage out from Cutie Pie. A large chunk of HP off both Crumbs and Kiwi Kid right there, but Ooh. Crumbs is actually going to recall right here, so it's going to be four on five for the duration. I think it's good damage around there. Chris is still getting himself fed up. Looks like he's actually only half health. They're going to rely on Sona for this one. They're going to just rely on Chris being a beast with his ultimate up. And both teams decide to walk away from Baron. Dignitas being out of the base has definitely given Velocity something to think about. They're not as so much in the driver's seat anymore. Yeah, and Velocity still have a teleport on Janna, so Dignitas still have to be careful, and they have to keep a lot of words up to to uh, try and keep track of the rest of the team. Kiwi, or Cutie Pie had gone bottom for a split second to clear that bottom wave, and Velocity don't hesitate. He didn't have his ultimate. He would have to be very safe in the fight. They say, we can hold it as four. Make sure that wave is pushed bottom. It is going to be up to the inhibitor. It's starting to really pressure back in the favor of Velocity again. They can just wait for this to happen and make sure Dig has to be in that, in that base. So they've got a few more um, seconds of a little bit extra HP on the creeps, but oh it will even out now. My. And we do have Dignitas sneaking in to try and take the Baron of their own. Chris isn't there. That's damage onto Cutie Pie. Remember, he has the dash. He can get himself out of Baron. Crumbs can sh slingshot out. Cutie Pie is going to take some good damage here, but he gets himself out there. The Crescendo just missing a bit off key once again. And we'll see Maple Street in the backside. Scar tries to get to him immediately, so he can't put pressure on the team. The flash from Maple Street coming in. The collateral damage just coming up for Cutie Pie. Will he finish two? He gets a double kill here. Now looking for Maple Street to get the third, but it looks like he's gone down by the hands of Scara as he almost bleeds to death. Scar, very manly right there <laughs> able to finish off Maple Street and the Baron oh, really where these LCS games are won and lost. Vile Rose doing his, his best with that teleport to answer back with an inhibitor but two members back from Dig means he's only gonna get one. 
This is not something that Velocity met the last time they did the poke comp. The game did not go this long. The other team wasn't able to mitigate all that damage and really put a team fight back together that could organize against a poke comp. But now they have in Velocity, I don't think they've been to this part of the game. It's that situation where it goes late and you're kind of in the no man's land of where to do next. Well, the last time Velocity ran this one in the promotion uh, tournament, they actually n didn't get caught and hard engaged on and ever ace like that. Yep. So it's it's really because Dignitas were able to get that beautiful elastic slingshot from Crumbs and and Les Bounce of knocking able to shoot out of the air and, the, and get the resets on Skara that really allowed them to uh, completely turn this game around from their earlier throw that they happened at where else but Baron. But Baron. Definitely a hard mode game for Dignitas here. Like we said, they've been in the base. They're finally back out. When they were in their base, the gold was completely even. The second they were able to step out, now they're up about 7,000 gold. Mm -hmm. It's that fast. Dig is understanding that they're getting a foothold here. It's up to Velocity to kind of play the trickery again and cause that chaos they were before. Dig's starting to read that like a book. And really, the, the main tool that Velocity have are the, the down inhibitor and bottom lane. It means that that lane has super minions. So if Velocity do this trick where uh, you go to top lane and they just killed off all of the ranged minions, yep. but left the melee minions, which have a lot more health, but do uh, don't do as much damage. Mm -hmm. Then they could build up a kind of stack, a big yeah, a big wave top, and not have to be there. They could force mid, and then all three lanes would be pushing. Just kind of working it, working off the ball, if you will, making sure it's moving. But you are as well. Three stacked together in mid here for Dig. Actually, four as they're just kind of hovering all over Cutie Pie, so he can't be seen. Scar in the bottom lane trying to pressure out. So the map objective free. Dragon's been grabbed. It really wasn't a worry as Baron in the hands of Dignitas. Velocity to clean up their side of the map. Everything's up to the river, so somebody's got to so, make a move here. We just had Vile Rails go up top and give an extra little push to that giant wave, but they're wasting this huge wave that Velocity just had. That was actually a big tool for them to make use of, and since they didn't have pressure any, in either of the other lanes, the Dig Toss are free to just go up there, clear it, and that's a free sack of gold for them. It's becoming that farther than they want it to be item game. And Velocity, I think, knows they're in a crunch right now. Once they get their team to a base, they're kind of pushing something that's already been pushed, which is really why it's being hard for them to even get through the front door. <laughs> oh, it's all been pushed now. They've they've been all over that base. They're they're well uh, well aware <laughs> of the, well, the well, inner insides of the Dignitas Fortress. Ward's going down for Dig just on the outside of Red Buff and Wraith Camp all the way up to Tribush on that. So they're keeping it safe for any entry. They want to know what lane is being pushed, when and how and where. The only thing they can't keep track of is that, you know, teleport from Giant that could come from anywhere. But he's got another minute left on that one on the cooldown. So pretty much Velocity don't have too much up their sleeves at this point. And Dignitas, what they have to do is actually answer by, by shoving in all the lanes here and get control of the map. It looks like they are going to head down mid while Ezreal is going to look for a split push. Looking at what the items are, the Rabadons for Kiwi Kid, he's had that for quite a bit. We see Oops. Scar really getting to that full pen build. The Black Cleaver on. Movement for MK Inc. in the top lane. Dignitas we'll switch it up. Fight. They're sending Scar to go get a free kill here while the rest of Dignitas hold Velocity at their oh. turret. Scar is going hunting. He may be able to see him. Oh, oh he's doing oh, just a second too late, but he stops AK Inc. He does have the Glacial Shroud. That is going to be those one second Mystic shots you never want to get, but he got the Q before he walked out of range. Scar always gets his man. <laughs> NK Inc. stopped the recall right there. And now we have Crumbs initiating. Crumbs going in pretty hard. Let's Bounce is up. He throws it on, and it looks like it's just going to be for a good show. Uh, very happy go lucky Zach right there. <laughs> Good show. And indeed. he's just an enjoying himself. So since Scar did go back, he was able to, to even up uh, the balance of champions because he was able to kill NK Inc., but he's forced to stay back and clear waves. This means 4 versus 4, Velocity versus Dignitas at the mid secondary turret. And we got to remember this is going to affect the three inhibitors down if win percentage, if Dignitas can get a win. See, people say it's un impossible. Did they have three inhibitors down at the same time? I don't know if it was the... I'd say it was damn close okay. if it was getting pushed. <laughs> just get, we'll, we'll give it some, yeah. <laughs> close enough, guys.
<laughs> 72,000 here to 64,000 in gold. It's still one turret. It's, it's completely been velocity put on a stall. Dignitas has figured out that once they get to the front of the base, it's hard for them to push through unless Dig makes a mistake. Now Dignitas is really dictating what is going to happen in the game. They're finding the momentum they had in their win. Dignitas have to play a slow game now. You know, they have to slowly gain control, get, regain control of the entire map, which means tons of money being spent on wards and slowly just creeping up that line of vision for their team so that the back door is not an option. I actually don't see this game ending within the next five, ten minutes here. Both teams so so cautious in their movements and like one shot onto Eveniscus, he's like, I don't even want to see if my next shot will crit. I need to get out right now. Yeah, and, and this is really where the manipulation of creep waves uh, comes into full effectiveness. Whichever team is able to uh, judge the timings and utilize the canyon min cannon minions uh, push, correctly, yeah, it, it are going to be the ones to come out on top here because. Well, right now we can see Dignitas is shoving two lanes, all of Velocity going uh, bottom here for one lane, and it looks like we're going to have to have a recall. They are trying to get the farthest away from anybody that they can. Now trying to push this bottom lane. The Nexus turret is down there, which means they only have to go for that one on the left side or across the horn and just grab the inhibitors for themselves. They go straight in, PewDiePie, Scara. They have great AoE to kind of just stop a push if there's no wave or even if there is a wave. If you're a Velocity fan, you got to keep your eyes on Maple Street and hope that he does not get knocked out of the air again. There it is. The Monsoon comes out. It gets pushed back even farther, actually. It's going to be Crumbs trying to go in. The Let's Bounce goes for the Crescendo, but he's going to be able to get out with the tenacity of the ultimate. Chris goes all the way back. Dignitas looking pretty healthy, but Scarra gets dropped out there. Cutie Pie takes the true shot barrage. Maple Street looks like he's going on the offensive here. Scarra tries to get in. Oh. Bam! Takes him down. Wild Growth gets him up, but it's not going to be enough for too long. Dignitas is actually coming out with the win on the fight. That was so close to being well played by Velocity right there. They disengaged with their first three ultimates perfectly. They had the John and Knockback. They also had the Crescendo for an answer, but it wasn't enough on the re-engage from Dignitas. Scarra not hesitating to jump right in and just melt Maple Street where he stood. This is a little bit of a tough push here for Dig. They don't have the sturdy ladder to climb back on. It's been a rough one. The few first limbs there are broken. It looks like they're able to get a strong foothold on the next few. The inhibitor turret to go down for them. 32 kills to 12. Velocity's been able to create all this pressure without getting the kills. Like we said, this poke comp isn't about fighting, but when it does come down to fighting, that team has the upper hand. Yeah, Velocity, they were, they were all about kiting, and they were doing a good job kiting, but they just lost uh, control of it at that last second when Skara, after he got back up from GA, went in a second time, and GG to Dignitas. Well deserved. Dignitas in a hard mode game at 49 minutes in are able to thwart off an entire base crush and bring it back into the face of Velocity Esports.